All right, time for a new filament from a new manufacturer, Polymaker. Haven't used them before. Now it's PTG and it's shiny gold. So we're hoping, this is the PLA we've been using that's shiny gold. I hope it's gonna come out like this, but as you'll see, the package is, the packaging is opaque. We can't really tell what's in it. So we'll have to open it up and uh, see what's in there. All right, so it's got a nice vacuum on it. That's good, always a good sign. Hear that vacuum come off. And like many manufacturers now, they're using cardboard uh, reels to be more ecologically friendly. And let's take a look at this color. That's the main reason we got this. And it's got a nice shiny color. It's not quite as shiny as this one, but I think that's okay. It's slightly matte compared to this PLA. This is um, CC, CC3D silk PLA. So. It wasn't, it wasn't advertised as being silk, which is fine. But I think this color is going to work for our project. So so we'll do our usual tests, and we'll do a fun print, and then I'm, I'll show you what I'm using, it, making a product out of this at the end. So, so let's see. It says uh, printing speed 30 to 50 millimeters per second. Printing temperature three, 230 to 240, so that's good. We like to print at 237. And bed tensioner is 75, 70 to 80. So now I've usually been using 65, so hopefully that'll work. It says fan off, but I've been using fan on the second layer at 10%. I'd get better results for that. So I'm going to try to print this. We'll do the temperature tower and do the other things, but um, hopefully we can print it the same way we're printing the rest of our PTG. Now let's go ahead and weigh this. I don't have a cardboard reel to get the net weight, but we'll just see what we got there. All right, so it's 1,143 grams. So I think that's, uh, for these cardboard reels, that's probably a good number. Probably weighs, the cardboard reel probably weighs less than uh, 140, hopefully. And we'll have to check later once we've used up one of these to see exactly what we got. All right, so here's our open SCAD project that we're gonna use to do a temperature tower. So there's a link to this in the uh, show notes. So this particular one is a um, has pointy things on it. This gives a good indication of how well your extrusion is doing. Also it has bridges to see how your bridging is doing, if you have any sagging, things like that. So we'll go ahead and uh, render this. It doesn't take very long. In this case we're just going from 233 to 239. We've been printing most of our PTG, actually all of our PTG at 237. So I'm hoping this will print at 237 as well. If it doesn't, it's not a big deal. Uh, we can always adjust it. All right, so we'll make an STL file, and then we'll import it into Simplify 3D, and I'll show you how to set that up. All right, here we are in Simplify 3D. We imported our temperature tower for Polymaker PETG. And um, the way this works is, is you set up your bed temperature. 65 is what I'm using for all the other PETG I'm printing, so I'm going to start with that. And then you have uh, different temperatures for different layers. So you want to print this first, the base and this first bridge here at 239. Then we're going to go to 237, 235, and 233. So again, since we're printing almost everything at 237, there's really no reason to go below 233, I don't think. The Polymaker specs say 230 to 240. So this looks like a good thing. It's only got uh, four bridges, won't take very long. So we set this up. Oh, and another thing I've been doing for all of my PTG is setting cooling at 10% after the first layer. The box says no cooling, but I have had problems with that. It, it ends up remelting the layer right below it. So I've had much higher quality PTG prints by having a little bit of cooling. I tried 25% and uh, 20%, but 10% seems to be the best. So. All right, so here's our project. It's going to take 46 minutes to print. It only uses about 5 grams, so that's not too bad. All right, so we'll send this off to a uh, SIM card, and we'll plug it in the uh, Dreamer NX, and we'll uh, switch over to the time lapse. <laughs> So I want to uh, reiterate that 
when we print PETG, we print with the top all the way down, the door closed. So, let's cut the top off so we can get a better look at this. Put the preheat back on so we don't let the extruder head cool off. We don't want to do that. Right, no string at the end, so that's good. So the layer adhesion is pretty good. Let's see what the bottom looks like. It's okay. So let's look at our different towers here. So a little bit of sag, less sagging at two, which is interesting. I guess because it, maybe it's adhering better. Yeah. Less sagging at 239 than 237. I'm not really putting any bridging on this uh, test, but also the pointy tower on 239 looks better actually. So I guess we're putting this one at 239. Yep. Yeah, see the bottom of the bridge on the 239, which is the lowest one, is perfect. The other ones are. Not so great. The main thing I'm noticing is these uh, point, pointy things over here. They stay, the best is at the bottom, and then they get worse and worse as you go up. So, all right. Well, we're only putting one th one product with this particular filament. I like the color. It's a gold. It's not extra shiny, which I don't really want extra shiny. So I think it's a good. It's a great color for the product I'm going to be making for my Etsy store. So again, I'll show that at the end. We're going to go ahead and do the, uh, I'll do this at 239. We'll go ahead and do the uh, layer adhesion test and uh, cracking test, just to make sure we dialed in our temperature and cooling. All right, after we figure out our temperature, in this case, we're printing at 239, and we're going to stick with a bed temperature of 65 for now. You might go up to 70, see how it prints. I have had problems where the PETG sticks too well to that uh, printer sheet that goes on the top of the print bed on the uh, Dreamer NX. So I don't want to go too high. You have to be able to get it off afterwards without destroying things. So, so this is a test. I've got a link for this in my show notes. I use this on all my filaments because it checks your layer ad bed adhesion. And layer adhesion, this, this little joint here, if you don't have good layer adhesion, this is going to crack when you flex this angle here. So I really uh, swear by this test. It also does some detail work. It does some raised printing and indented printing, which I, have, I do on some of my products. So I like to do that to see how it can do details. All right, so we go ahead and render this. And again, there's a link to this in the show notes. It's on Thingiverse for free. And we'll make an STL file and send it over to Simplify 3D. All right, so here we are in Simplify 3D with our uh, bed and layer adhesion and cracking test. And we've got our profile set for PETG Polymaker. And for temperatures, we've got 65 and 239. Now, once the cooling turns on, I found that this is going to be a couple degrees lower. So we'll see how it works out. The other thing on PTG, I use an extruder multiply, extrusion multiplier at 1.0, whereas P PLA I use 0 0.9, which is the recommended number. On the speeds, I slow things down. I only print at 2,800 uh, millimeters per minute, and I but I move much quicker. I think the default for PLA here is 6,000. The default for PLA printing speed, I think, is 3,600. Uh, but it's better to slow it down. It, it, it hears better. And the, uh, but, but moving from one place to another, I want to go fast because I don't want any stringing. So that cuts down on stringing. All right, so we'll go ahead and print this up. It's going to take 55 minutes. And uh, if it all works out, those are the parameters we'll use for our fun print. <laughs> Thank you.
how the uh, layer adhesion or bed adhesion worked. This bottom is a little messy. Yeah. Let's see how strong this is. Yeah, see it's not strong at all, so. So we have a problem with our layer adhesion. So we'll have to work on that. We don't have this dial in there. Here's one that I did with another PTG and I can squeeze this really hard and it doesn't come apart. So. Alright, then you have to use no fan like you said. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Post a comment if you have any questions or ideas and I'll try to respond. That's all for now, but more videos are coming. And if you want to see them, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification icon if you don't want to miss one. This is Beta Signy signing out and keep looking up.